Hello everybody, let's have a look at the inside of the habitation box. Um, there's not an awful lot inside it, it's just as it's come back, it's probably dirty. So, we'll get the steps out, open the doors up, we'll go in and have a look. So, steps are quite simple, they're an alloy construction. They just pull out um, and, and fold away. And, and that's just a simple, easy design. I didn't want anything to clip on inside the doors or around the back or anything like that. It was just a, some, something simple to pull out. Like that. Let them down. And that's it. You can use the side, and the kids can use the side as a, as a handrail. And then, in we go. So this is it, this is the inside of the habitation box, it's a small compact box, exactly what we're looking for. Again, the whole idea of this is to try and get far off-road, bad tracks away, exploring different places. And we travelled before with a Land Rover and what we learned was a lot of the time we were outside, we want to sort of live outside, cook outside, camp outside but having some place nice to come back to an evening with the kids now. And not only that, one of the, the two most important things that we decided originally that we wanted was to be able to have um, no insects or as little insects as we can about for the children when they're sleeping and to have a toilet show. Okay, so the basic ideas of the, the habitation pod is this is um, our bed space. It's 140 uh, by two meters. It's longer than that, but we're going to build it out slightly. We're going to have a control panel either coming down here. This is the reversing camera and um, four-way cables from that's been mounted on the roof. The uh, one kilowatt of solar that's been fitted by Victron is sitting just above here as well. We just need an exact where it's going to come through in glands. But all the cabling is going to come, as you can see, into this area here. We haven't decided whether we're going to put a control panel. My original idea was to have a control panel above the door, out of the way, and the kids can't touch it. But the way it's working out to bring anything else out, I don't think so. There's every chance it could either be in here, or even for that matter, it could be in this area in here, the actual control panel. But we'd like to try and keep this space. So we went for the outbound doors and windows and sunroof that we'll come to. Um, th this is a, a small door, um, but we didn't want to go any higher for two reasons. One, we want to put a control panel up here, as I said. And the other one is I want to put an awning on the other side, so I've got to leave myself a, a, an awning around outside. So this is fine for what we need. Um, obviously, it's got the uh, full fly screens. Um, I work like that. And like your house, it's got three points where it goes up, down, and bolts in the center. So they're very, very safe, secure, insulated doors. So far, we're, we're quite happy with them. The windows are fully double glazed windows. They're all designed, they're fiberglass, they're made for this kind of um, application for extreme vehicles. Um, they open right out nice like that. a little clip at the bottom there so you can have some ventilation and then the deadlock like that that's your blackout blind uh, which let no light in at all every single window in the entire habitation pod is exactly the same so once these are shut down there'll be no light we'd get into here at all so if we're having to sleep someplace that's quite light there's not going to be a problem the other thing there is that 
now is your fly screen. You can have that in whatever position you want. Magnets are quite hard for one hand. And that's the door open as it was before, so you can have it fully fly screened, fully shut, or any variations in between. Um, as we step over here, as I said, this is probably could be um, the area where the control panel is going to be. That's why we're going to put the wires on there. This is our fresh water tank here that I'm standing on. This is 300 litres, or that's actually over 300 litres. That's the inspection hatch, you know, a visual inspection on that, uh, and you can get into it to clean it out <coughs> to give it a good um, clean down and chlorinate. It has its, its um, sensor here that will get monitored by the Victron kit. We'll be able to see that online. It sounds a bit strange, but the whole idea for this truck is to be able to monitor everything. So, for example, if we were to leave and we left this for any period of time and add water in it. This has a solenoid valve fitted underneath this. So what I can do is online, I can actually open up the solenoid valve by looking at the tablet and seeing that it is got water left in it and it'll drain the water out of this. Which is really handy if you've left it much. So there's all different kinds of things built into this. So the, the other thing um, is about the habitation boxes and trucks in general. We're well, standing on this, we went through the, the, the fuel storage and the grey water storage. This being 300, we've got 700 um, of other storage, uh, 600 of fuel, 100 of waste and 300 here. That's a ton in weight, just in liquids. So this is why uh, a truck is essential for this kind of travel, it's just the out and out weight. We decided to go for a pull down insulated uh, roller shutter door mainly because we wanted as big an access as possible through into the, the cab. We want to try and, because it's a small build, we want to try and utilise as much space as we could. So we wanted that to become almost part of our living area. So we needed as big an area as we possibly can for crawling back and forward, we'll have a cushion on top of the freezer area there that we can easily crawl back and forward through here. So access to the kitchen and the toilet when we just pull up and stop on ferries, whatever, is, is very manageable. And that's kind of what we were looking for. So when we leave the truck for any period of time, we can shut this um, secure door down. So hopefully nobody ever does, but if ever it's broken into the front, they can't have access into the back here. And this is where obviously all our kit is. And also at night times when the bed gets made up, this will get shut down, it's fully insulated, and we'll just be in the pod, and this will be our, our bed sleeping area. And then afterwards when we travel, this can be lifted back up again. Above my head is a, a, a skylight that is fully openable, that will open right up. Again, it has exactly the same blinds, fly screens, and the blackout. So if you want to lie here in this bed area, open it up, you can sit and get a good view of the stars outside at night time if you want it. So that's a blanked out there, so in most evening positions when you want to get a good night's sleep that's where it's going to be and during the day if you've got the window open a little bit of ventilation you don't want any mosquitoes and things coming in that's that position so really happy with the way that's worked out it's all uh, metal construction aluminium construction so nice and sturdy we won't go into the the victron kit uh, on this side um it's it's uh, Documented online uh, uh, on, the, on our website, um, all what goes on in there. So from here, we're going to have units again, 300, and they're going to travel right through into the kitchen area. So we're basically going to have cushions here and here, units here and here. Same there, and then a table um, 
that'll take up this space here. The table will be in a lagoon type. We've got two lagoon table mounts for inside. We're going to have a look at it and see if it's going to be suitable uh, because what we'd like to be able to do is take the table and move the whole thing over here and lock it down so it becomes part of the kitchen and it remains clear for getting access back and forward from the cab to the habitation box and then we can quite simply move it back and forth and it's a nice thing to move out the way to get to come in and sit down and bring the table over so that's this area here that's pretty much what we intend to do in here the plan for the kitchen is quite a simple one the kitchen is uh, 1.2 to here and then a 600 tall boy unit there's going to be a sink here there's going to be the fridge underneath that the next 600 unit is all going to be drawers and then there's going to be a two burner gas hob the 600 unit that comes basically from here all the way down is going to have the um, washing machine we went for a three kilogram Zanussi washing machine that's going to fit in here probably with a hundred mil larder pull out that we can have different soaps toilet rolls things like that is a little larder cupboard here then probably a pull out drawer then a combination of a microwave here and then either a couple of drawers but probably a drawer in the cupboard we'll, we'll see what we finish off with as far as that's concerned and that's pretty much the, the kitchen again right over the top matching up going through as we said there's still going to be the the, the overhead little lockers there uh, and and most of the the duct work from the the heating coming in from this side and the, the water is all going to channel along the floor here with access underneath the the kitchen units that we can get to valves filters whatever else that we need to get to this middle one As we said on the outdoor video, we're going to split this into three. This storage area underneath this bed, that's what's accessed from both sides. On this side, we've discussed that it could be the utility one, which we're very much in favour of. So the, the Trumor diesel hot water blow air heating and um, hot water unit will go in underneath there. I'm hoping that the Trumor air conditioning unit, that link together to give an overall product will go in the same place. I'm not 100% sure because of where the holes in the floor have got to go in relation to the lockers underneath and outside. But it would be nice if we could get them both into that area with an outside shower and other bits and pieces that we need for the utility wise under there. That will let me run all the ducts and the pipe work along underneath the kitchen and keeps everything nice and neat and tidy. We're trying to maximise storage in a space this size so what we intend to do or what we're looking at is having uh, drawers two large drawers 700 long the full length of that in the back that come out on big runners for clothes or for a, a, a larder or whatever but two uh, nice big drawers there the bunk bed area uh, for the boys is quite self-explanatory you have the uh, windows the outbound windows of obviously smaller here and the other one here and the single bed mattress is 900 which is from here to here is 900 by 1.9 so that leaves us about a 350 mil roughly cupboard at the foot end for storage for a charging area a pull down door that will have a rubber grip on that they can charge phones computers um, things like that and where we have the aluminium frame the, that, that supports these beds and also gives a great strength to the box we're going to put a foam uh, a layer of foam with a uh, uh, a material on top of that so it's a little bit more homely and nice you're not turning around at night time and touching a, a cold fiberglass wall the the walls themselves are 60 mil sandwich construction 
um, fiberglass insulation, fiberglass apart from the roof which is 80 millimeter and the floor which is 80 millimeter and the exact height from the floor to the roof is 1.960 um, we started off that it was going to be two meters was a requirement uh, but it came down slightly with the thickness that I wanted of the, the floor and the roof. The internal walls that were fitted by Atkinson Voss during the build itself here are 25 mil thick and these are exactly the same, just thinner, sandwich construction, fiberglass, very strong. So again, making the box incredibly, incredibly strong um, inside. And that takes us onto the walls of the, the, the toilet shower room, exactly the same sandwich construction here. And how we did this was we, we made up the shower tray for the full size and the shower tray was bonded onto the floor first. Two outlets that go through into the waste tank. So if we're lying at different angles, uh, the, the, the water's got a chance of getting away. The toilet was then bonded onto the stainless steel tray. So in the future, if we ever have any problems where the, the cassette bursts or the, the water inside the toilet bursts or for whatever reason, everything lands on the stainless steel and goes out the drain. There's nothing at all can come out into the actual pod itself. And not only that, once we bonded the stainless steel down, and we can then attach the walls to the stainless steel, again, making it incredibly, incredibly solid. The whole idea was that everything was bonded completely solid because it's an off-road truck it's going to take a pattern. Inside the toilet area we have a Thetford cassette toilet, we have a warm air blow duct um, that was put in as the toilet was installed to come into this area. Uh, there's going to be a shower which will probably sit here facing this direction and a cupboard built into this area for, for sundries. We have a max fan fitted to the roof that will have its own um, blanket blind, mosquito blind and uh, remote control. And the idea of this room is that we're going to have, uh, I think I'm going to say this right, a tambour door that will come across here and then turn in front of the toilet. So when the room is not in use, this door will actually be in the open position, shutting off the toilet like that. So the max fan itself then becomes part of the living space. We didn't want max fans over the roof for a few reasons. One, we don't want to cut too many holes in the roof. Two, we don't want to have max fans whirling away right above your head. So the, the idea was that we needed this in here to be able to expel the cooking odors and just general daily living. But the main thing that we wanted this for is we're going to put a rack up here and any wet clothes from walks and wellies and things can go in this room. The tambour door can be shut. The heating will be then turned on. The max fan can be turned on full. And at that point, this room with the door shut turns into an incredibly good drying room. It's going to have a lot of air getting sucked out or blown in and a lot of heat coming in there from the diesel heating. We're also looking in this space here to have a drawer that comes out and that'll be for shoes and slippers and things like that that we can come in on a, a, a rug, take our shoes off, drop them in the box and then shut them. I'm hoping we can do exactly the same with this space down here, that we can have another one here. But again, there's a lot of utilities and stuff to fit into here and everybody wants a bit of the space, but I would like that to be able to be used as well. And that brings us back to on top here, and that's where we're going to have the majority of our storage and our bedding, our, our um, uh, pillows and duvets and things are going to be on this section here, so it's easy just to lift up and get into to make the bed. This is the basic layout of the internals of the habitation pod. Bit of a mess, we've just obviously got the truck back, um, so now, now the building starts.
You are doing brilliantly, by the way. Couldn't ask for any better. Nice and safe. <laughs>